you're a Christian and you firmly believe in this gospel message and its transformative power, the temptation is to not resist the social surge by yourself. It's to close ranks. We've been talking about this word for quite some time in, in, in the sort of social milieu and the way people talk about what influence Christianity has on the world. And we talk about this post-Christian world. What do we mean? This is exactly what we mean, is that people are surging away from the Christian message. And if you stand and you try to say, no, wait, this is the right train to get on, they don't want to hear it. They want you to come with them. In other words, a world is post-Christian when Christianity has lost its social influence. A world is post-Christian when Christianity has lost its social influence. Now, how has this happened? I think it's happened because we've equated Christianity or the message of the, Christ, of the, of the Christian faith, specifically evangelical Christianity, with politics, with right-wing politics or uh, whatever thing that might sound like a bad thing in the world is. We've sort of equated it with this and with, with prejudices of every kind. That's what's happened, and it's been building for quite some time now. A lot of it's unfair. Some of it is deserved. Some of it is not fair in terms of the way Christians maybe have acted in terms of Christendom as opposed to the Christian message. So this is what's happened now, is there's an equation of the Christian message with things either highly political, highly social, or in some ways highly prejudicial. And it becomes increasingly hard when this surge comes forward to say, but wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. That's not the message. But they've been seeing that message, at least hearing it in some form, whether it's fair or not, for quite some time. And the temptation, the temptation when you're faced with that, if you're a Christian and you firmly believe in this gospel message and its transformative power, the temptation is to not resist the social surge by yourself. It's to close ranks. Now, that's a natural and a good thing. You want to close ranks and find people who are of like mind who say, how do we resist this? How can we actually deal with the social surge that's going away from the Christian message? But the problem is, is that when we close ranks, the very natural thing for a human being to do is to want to defend and say, either you've got it wrong, or that's not really the message, or not all Christians, or whatever it might be, and we commit to an us versus them mentality. It's a natural thing for humans to do. Whenever you face opposition, you find people of like mind and you say, we are us and they are them. That's natural. But then you read the words in Scripture. When you see the first century and the way in which the church was birthed in an extremely hostile political environment, in an extremely hostile religious environment, where there was all kinds of pluralism of different political views and different, poli different religious beliefs, they were no less pluralistic in the first century than we are now. Yes, there's all kinds of religions that are vying for your attention and all kinds of non-religions that are vying for your attention. But when you look at the Roman Empire, what they did, one of, the, one of the things that they did okay was they let people believe what they wanted to believe as long as it didn't interfere with state business. So you had a multiplicity of different faiths, especially as the church was growing and spreading into the East, into Asia, and also into the West in Europe and into Africa. So they were dealing with the same issues we were dealing with today. They were dealing with a lot of the same political hostilities we're dealing with today. And yet Paul writes in Romans, he doesn't write Let's circle the wagons, make sure that no one can penetrate the defenses. Let's keep the kids as safe as possible and not send them out into the world to change the world. No, this is what he says. Romans chapter 15, verses 20 to 21. He says, and thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation, but as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see and those who have never heard will understand. 